Hi, I'm Shelly. In this video, I will show you the easiest method on how to make a multiple part mold in order for you to increase the time saved in labor, increase your production, and increase the complexity in your forms. If you like the idea of all three, keep watching. Step one, determine if your multiple part mold is even necessary. Your model may not even need multiple parts. So how do you determine this? Check to see if your model is consistently sloping inward for undercuts. Now, if you don't know what an undercut is, I encourage you to check out the first video on how to make a one part mold. I go into detail about what an undercut is and how to avoid them. Trust me, it's gonna save you so much time and headaches actually. Here we have two examples of one part casted molds. The bowl frees up with no problem. The mug, however, has problems getting out because the handle created an undercut. The cup is stuck forever and the mold is rendered useless. To make this castable, making this into multiple parts enables the mug to be freed easily. Step two is to determine your seams for your multiple part mold. To determine your seams, look at your model from all points and all directions and ask yourself this question. Can I pull this out in one direction? Also hot tip, whatever you want to cast, make sure it isn't anything precious because you'll be marking up your seams with a permanent marker and it'll be subjected to high temperature. So don't go taking your family heirloom and putting it into plaster because it's not gonna come back. You can find seams in everyday things. You can even see the seam in this inner handle of this cup. In most plastic bottles, you'll be able to see the seam line. The reason why I mark up my seams is so that you'll be able to see it clear. The shampoo bottle I will cast today had these outward slopes that'll prevent me from freeing up the bottle as a one part mold. So the plan is to cast a multiple part mold over here. To free this particular bottle, I will be removing the second side in this direction and releasing the bottle in the same way I freed up the second part. Step three, cast your first side. Make sure any holes in the casting area is plugged up with clay because plaster disasters happen. I'm creating a clay barrier wherever I don't want the plaster to form. And digging a space for half the bottle to be buried in. Here, the permanent marker really stands out and makes it easier to see where the seams are. This is where the base is going to drop in, where the plaster goes in, and it's going to come up to about one and a half inches, and that's going to be my top. It almost kind of looks like a little bed. Nighty night. So when lining up your coddles, you want the bottom of the L to be flush with your sides. I am agitating it so all the air bubbles will rise up to the surface. Place your keys. Now, what are keys? Keys are indents that will create a positive shape on the second side of the mold. These will fit perfectly into the mirrored negative shape on the first side. You have to be strategic of where you place your keys because if you place your key here, you won't be able to pull out the second side. This is called locking in your mold. So without keys, the mold has would just be two flat surfaces that could slip and slide on each other. I mean, not that slipping and sliding is not fun, but it just won't fit perfectly. And we want stuff to fit perfectly in our casting stuff. Step number five, soap your first side. This is so not a sponsorship, by the way. If there is anything that plaster loves more than water is itself. Just like how Kanye loves Kanye, plaster loves to stick to plaster. In this case, we need them to be separated so we can actually pull our mold apart. So we must soap it at least five times. The way that you'll know that your mold is ready to pour plaster on is if you see that the water is left on this plaster. There should normally, when you put water on plaster, it'll just suck it right up. I put some water on top and it's still pretty shiny and oily to the touch. As opposed to this, there's like no shine on it. So this one's good to go. Step six, repeat until all sides are done. Step 
step seven, cast your collar. Now, what is a collar? During the slip casting process, the slip gets lower and lower the more water it absorbs. We want an even thickness throughout the entire clay body. So having the extra height that you can cut off later is super beneficial if you want clean and even rims. I'm gonna make some keys. To make the collar, I'm going to make a triangular, like cone-like shape, and I want it to be a little bit outside our actual cutting off area. I'm making sure that the cone is smaller on top and wider on the bottom so it's easier to take off. In the side view, I'm using a straight edge to illustrate the tapered comb. Smaller on top, wider at the bottom. And after a quick cleanup time lapse, this is before cleanup and after. If you love these plaster tutorials, hit that notification bell because in the next video, I will show you how to mix plaster perfectly every time. If you want to learn more about making ceramics and molds, check out these two videos and subscribe over here for more videos like this. See you guys next time. Bye!